What's up guys, this is Technocube and you are watching Mobile Computing Fundamental. Well, in this session, we're going to understand the topic switching. So, let me precisely write it down here that we're going to understand switching. Oh, my I is inside the W, but that's okay. Now, in switching, if, we, if you need to understand this switching, first you need to understand the core concept of it, okay, where exactly it is coming from. So, the concept is, if you are having multiple devices, think about it. If you are having multiple devices and the idea is you want to connect them if you are having multiple devices and the needed thing is you want to connect them so how exactly you can connect them is there any way to connect them there are ways there are ways so the way is the first way is something called as point to point configuration you can put your devices in a point to point manner by means of point to point I have this computer here and I have another computer here. If you connect these two computers by via a one link, this is an example of point to point. You understand here? There is only one computer and then there is other computer and you are connecting with some, some one link. So this is an example of point to point. So this is the way. The second way is based on multi point. Now in multi point, it is the same structure, but there, there is a very minor difference. These are the two computers connected with each other, but then there are multiple computers connected to the same link. So this is an example of multipoint. And you understand that based on these two line configuration, we, we, we generally have an idea or a concept called as topologies. With the help of these two configuration, we create our topologies, which is, you know, not the, uh, not the a concept we're going to understand in this session. But there is something called topologies and we have different types of topologies like mesh, star and then ring and bus and hybrid and there are so many. But based on these two configuration, we can connect these multiple devices. That is the idea. This is the solution. But then there is a problem. What is the problem? Inside the multi point, if you connect the devices in multi point. So if you have this solution point to point, but then this solution itself is having a problem. What is the problem? See, if I write it down here. So the first solution, if I write it down, the first solution to connect those multiple devices, the first solution is point to point, right? If you, if you join those devices in a point to point manner, but then there is a problem inside this solution itself. What is the problem? Problem is, the first problem is, there is a wastage of link. Wastage of, oh, I hope this spelling looks good. Okay, so there is a wastage of link. Why there is a wastage of link? As because we only can join two computers with only one link, right? So that link is being used by only two computers. So there is this wastage of link, right? We are wasting our bandwidth there. So there is this wastage of link. And then I think this E will not come here. I'm so sorry. Okay, and then the second thing is it is completely impractical. Why it is because, you know, this is an impractic, impractical for larger networks so it is an in, impractical for larger network if you are having an organization network then it is somehow impossible to create this point to point you know uh, this point to point configurations so there are these two problems so the first solution itself is having problem so let's say i have the other solution other solution what do we have the multi point right this is the multi point solution but then this this solution is also having problem what is the problem there is, there is a congestion problem so the problem is congestion. How congestion works? You see, in multi-point, we can we can connect multiple devices. So when you connect multiple devices, there must be or there might be chances that it will uh, you know whenever you uh, whenever the multiple devices are coming in the network, then there is a possibility that multiple user will come up to grab the, those devices. So there are multiple devices, multiple users. When there is a multiple users in the channel, definitely there is a problem of congestion or traffic because we are not, you know, making uh, some uh, good access mechanisms. So that's why we have a problem. So inside the two solution, we have the problem itself. And that's why we need or there is a constant need to, uh, you know, to enhance a concept. And that concept is known as switching. So switching is the concept. Switching is the best concept or it is the better concept to connect those you know multiple devices so this is an example or this is not an example this is a, a better concept or better solution to connect those 
multiple devices. This is the better solution, right? Instead of using point to point and multi point, we are using something called as switching. So, switching network, I can write it down here switching network. Switching network consists of series. Switching network consists of series of interlinked nodes. Interlinked means it is the mediator link or the mediator devices interlinked nodes called as switch. Switch is an electronic component you can connect or you can join this in the network via your uh, links or computers. So this is an switch. Okay. So if I if I make a, a kind of a flow chart or not a flow chart but it is a kind of you know different types of switching if I make it out here. So I can write here switch or you can say switching and there are three types of switching mechanism available. I will precisely write it down. The first switching is known as circuit switching. Circuit switching. Then the second is packet switching. I don't know whether you had done this or not, but in the third or fourth semester, you must have done your computer network where exactly these three types of switching come and exist. I hope you had done it, but you, are, you don't remember. That's the problem. So this is message switching. Now the problem is not the problem, but this message switching is very near to that of packet switching. So in the course, we only understand the packet switching and the circuit switching. This is a kind of boundary or the limitations. Okay. So we'll understand precisely what do you mean by circuit switching and we will precisely understand what do you mean by packet switching. Let's understand circuit switching first. So we have circuit switching. Now what exactly happens in circuit switching? I will precisely draw a diagram here and then I'll make you understand what do you mean by circuit switching. So this is my network and it looks like a cloud. So this is a network and then there are some nodes. It's not nodes but just and these are the switches. Can you see? These are the switches. And let's say th th this side I have a computer number 3, I have a computer number 4 and I have a computer number 5. Here on this side I have a computer number 1, I have a computer number 2 and then I have a computer number 3. Let me join these, you know, these computer with, with these links. And third actually is, should be here. So these are connected. Now these are connected with this in this manner and then fifth is connected via this and then fourth is connected via this and let me draw one more switch here third is connected via this and uh, if i have or let me yeah this one is connected with this so these are internally these are these are known as these are switch and these are computer and this complete thing is going to be our network so this is a diagram of circuit switching. Now let's understand the thing and what are the core, you know, the uh, the points that you need to remember in circuit switching. So first thing is, the first thing is it consists of, it consists of set of switches, right? So you can see there are switches, it is set of switches connected by some physical link and you can see all are connected with some kind of cable or medium okay connected by connected by links what types of link physical links okay so we have it is it consists of a set of switches which are connected by some physical links then the second thing you need to remember is so here in this in this kind of circuit switching uh, here i will write the precise uh, precisely the second point the second point is uh, there is something called as a dedicated path whenever you create the circuit switching the dedicated path is been established dedicated path is established between a sender and receiver between a sender and a receiver 
and maintained that dedicated path is going to be maintained for the entire duration oh this is uh, come on my spellings are getting <laughs> completely wrong day by day maintained for an entire duration now what do you mean by that this line actually for an entire duration what exactly this line suggests is it is saying whenever you want to send some let's say this is this sender actually let me let me just color code it here this is going to be red. Okay. so let let me say this this one computer is going to be my sender here and this fifth computer is going to be my receiver here so this sender wants to want, wants to send some data to this r this receiver then there is a dedicated they need to decide the path it is going to be dedicated path it should be established before sending the data from sender to receiver okay they need to first establish or they need to first decide that what type of path i'm going to take okay so this is going to be my path this is going to be my path then this path is going to be completely reserved completely reserved for an entire duration until and unless the complete data is going to be sent to the receiver so this path is completely reserved for this particular sender and this particular reserve so you understand sorry receiver so you understand there is a dedicated path you can see this is the dedicated part path that they had established between between sender and receiver and that is going to be completely reserved until and unless the data has been completely sent it from sender to receiver okay for the entire duration that's the circuit switching so and once it has been you know established there is a routing decision so whatever i, I told you about this the dedicated path so they they, they actually they, they they do something called as routing decision happens so this dedicated path can, can be can be done with the help of routing decision so this is an also important thing here routing decision is made up between sender and receiver between sender and receiver for dedicated path so i hope you are getting it so there are three important points that we had seen in this in this particular session so it consists of set of switches then there is a dedicated path that has been established and the dedicated path can be can be established with the help of something called as a routing decision you getting it now the best example of circuit switching the best example is going to be your telephone you see telephone is an example why because it it gives you the dedicated path in between your call send and receiver your call no one can interfere in between your call that's an example of circuit switching you know you dial your number and you connect your sender and receiver then there is no third party which comes in between your communication or in your channel and create a kind of messy thing it is completely packed and reserved no one can come up so you if you had seen your earlier telephones that round shaped you you know you, you make a complete circuit and then you call it it is then it is an example of circuit switching so you see okay now there is one more thing you need to understand the point the next point you need to understand in circuit switching is there is a resource allocation so after the dedicated path is the data that you after the dedicated path you established you need to transfer your data right but before transmission of your data there is something called as before i will write it down here before starting before starting of communication before starting of communication resources resources are completely reserved resources are completely reserved by that sender and receiver so this is going to be sender and receiver so what type of resources so when i say resources what type of resources so resources can be the buffer or the buffer time then processing time processing time then there is something called as bandwidth and you know so on and such type of thing those uh, those types of things we call it as resources so, 
So let's understand now the packet switching. You already had seen uh, circuit switching. So the difference between circuit and packet is a circuit is uh, you know somehow related to the analog data, whereas the packet switching it is uh, related to the digital data. Why in terms of digital is because we are sending packets instead of analog signals. So I'll give you some some points on the packet switching. So if I have a message, so I will write it down if if the message if the message is going to pass if the message is going to pass from packet switching i will shortly abbreviate it as switching so if the message is going from a packet switching then it needs to be segmented or then it needs to be divided then it needs to be divided into packets into I'm so sorry into packets of fixed or variable sized of fixed or variable size what do you mean by that is uh, if your message if you want to send a message from one end to another end then if you are using packet switching then the message should be divided into number of packets of fixed or variable size the size of or this size is going to be decided by completely it is going to be decided by two factors or the two two uh, entities one is your network and the other one is governing protocol so whatever the protocol you are using you are following it okay so you are following that the following you will follow the size of that uh, the protocol that is mentioned there governing protocol so whatever okay so the size is completely dependent by the network and the size that is written in the governing protocol uh, the uh, the report or something like that in the protocol itself okay you will follow that the next important thing in the in the packet switching that there is nothing called as a dedicated path okay so whenever you you create your packet switching or whenever you use your uh, packet switching there is i will precisely write it down here that there is there is no dedicated path between sender and receiver between sender and receiver it is completely dynamic it is completely virtual so it is it is somehow on demand whenever there is a need to send a data it will find a shortest path and it will just send it out okay so this is there is no dedicated path between sender and receiver there is also there is there is no resource allocation you also understand this there is no resource allocation between sender and receiver and resource allocation here in the packet switching the resource allocation is on demand here in packet switching here in packet switching resource allocation is on demand you understand what do you mean by on demand it is a kind of cloud computing service whenever you want it you will get it as the services are on the internet you can access anywhere and the allocation this allocation it is completely based on fcf fcfs criteria it is first come first serve so whatever whosoever come first uh, it will it will get the service so first come first serve okay so there is there is no resource allocation in the in the packet switching but then there is a resource allocation on demand and the allocation is based on the fcfs criteria that is first come first service okay so now the other thing is as there is there is a little problem here the problem is the problem is as there is this resource allocation is on demand there is a lack so i will precisely write it down there is a problem and let me let me draw it in the in the red color so that you understand so we have a problem and what is the problem problem is 
the lack of reserve re, reservation or this lack of reservation and on demand reservation and on demand allocation creates a problem called as creates a problem called as delay in the service you understand why delay is because you understand that the service is completely on demand whenever a person needs a service he can get it that means there is a large mass who expect the same thing he can access anything on the internet on the on the way on the move right if everyone is doing the same thing then to access the to and then then to access those services is is, is going to be a little bit you know difficult for the individual because everyone is using it everyone is trying to get that service but then in that trying someone is going to uh, someone is going to you know hold that uh, service and that is why you know the service is going to be delay uh, to get to the individual user this is the problem here as there is no reservation of the you know resource allocations because we are not uh, you know uh, preserving those resources for the entire duration but we are giving those resources on demand and as these are on demand anyone anyone wants to access those services he can access it, he can completely access it. but then because of that reason everyone is going to uh, is going to access th those services and because of that reason there is a problem called as a delay because if everyone is trying to access that service then someone in that large mass will you know will have to wait to get that service as some everyone is using it that's the problem here okay so that is the packet switching if i draw a diagram of packet switching then it looks something like this if i have a complete network and then this is where is it this is my sender here and as i told you that sender is having packets is it, let's say it is in the frame format so this is four three two and one and he wants to send in the network and it, on the opposite side we have a receiver here you see this is a receiver so he can send with the help of routers in the network we have different routers and he will take the shortest path to reach to this particular receiver so maybe he can get to this uh, router and then he get to this router then he get to this router get to this router and ultimately it is going to be on the receiver side and he will precisely get that data one two three and four so you can see this is a pretty a good example of packet switching where you have multiple this is router by the way this is going to be router and this is basically your network so instead of switches the electrical switches we are using routers they are somehow intelligent and they have the routing mechanism that how to forward these packets because they are working with the shortest path you know algorithms right i hope you are understanding it these are the two things that you need to understand the circuit switching and packet switching okay i hope you like it thank you so much for listening to me and if you haven't subscribed my channel i again insist you to please you know subscribe it thank you so much for the help